Hi, this is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. Welcome to our class. Welcome to our first JavaScript class. Let's review the client-server model. The web browser, referred to as the client, sends a request to the server. The server will retrieve that file and send it back to the browser, which then displays the file in the browser. As if the browser were requesting a server-sided file, such as ASP or PHP, the server would first process that file, convert the process code to HTML, and then send it back to the server. So in the client-server web model, we have what is called server-sided and client-sided technologies. Anything processed by the browser is considered client-sided, and that is limited to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They are all processed by the browser, which means we can test them on our computers. They do not need to be interpreted by the web server. This is an example of good coding for our HTML5 document, and you want to be using good HTML5 in this class. We have in the head section, the meta character set element comes first, then the title, and the rest of the code in the body. Some other things you need to make sure that you understand when it comes to basic HTML5 syntax. Here we have a one-sided element, the image tag. And notice there is no forward slash at the end that is not required in HTML5. HTML elements, which is the name of the tag, consist of attributes. Here we have two attributes, a source attribute and an alt attribute. Attributes give further characteristics to that element. Attributes contain values. Values can be enclosed in quotations or not. So make sure that you understand your basic HTML elements, what an attribute and value are, as they will be used in JavaScript. Some other things we need to make sure we are aware of are some basic CSS selectors. Here I have an opening and closing paragraph tag. I have the ID equals one. This ID is used by CSS as a selector. And in the CSS code, the ID value is preceded by a pound sign. And consequently, the style is applied. A class attribute of the P tag can be used as a class selector, and the syntax for that would be a period preceded by the value of that class attribute. The element itself can be used as a selector. We also have descendant selectors, meaning this style will be applied to this element that exists inside this selector. So here we have a B tag existing inside a pound one selector, so the style would be applied to the word very. So please review chapter one in the book to brush up on your basic HTML and CSS. All right, what is JavaScript? JavaScript is a scripting language that runs in the browser and only in the browser. It is case sensitive. This is very important, so please watch your case. It is cross-platform along with HTML and CSS. It is object-oriented, meaning we work with objects, methods, and properties. We will be learning that as we proceed in this class. It is loosely typed, meaning that when we declare a variable to hold a value, we do not have to declare the type of that value, such as a number or a text. We will learn more about that next week. JavaScript is standardized by the European Computer Manufacturer Association. 
JavaScript is not Java. J Java is a completely separate high-level programming language used to develop desktop applications and also um, native mobile applications. JavaScript is client-sided. It is interpreted by the browser. All right. JavaScript was developed by Netscape in the mid-60s and mid-90s. It was initially called LiveScript. It sh when it shipped with Netscape 2.0, the browser, it was renamed JavaScript. The reason for that being that Java was also a very popular language and they wanted to capitalize on the Java buzzword. In the mid, around the year 2000, JavaScript became very popular being used in a technology called AJAX, which stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML, although you don't have to use XML to use AJAX. This AJAX technology, which is still used today, popularized many of our Web 2.0 applications, such as Maps. Uh, what AJAX is is the ability to communicate to the server um, without a, having a page refresh. JavaScript was very difficult to use, and today we most of us are using JavaScript by virtue of using frameworks such as jQuery. So frameworks were developed, which is essentially JavaScript behind the scenes, but with an easier user interface. All right, so how does JavaScript fit into the to the web page? We have HTML, which is the content layer. The HTML elements contain our content, and by content I mean text, images, multimedia, etc. We have the CSS, which is the presentation layer. CSS dictates the look of our web page. JavaScript is the behavior layer. It dictates how our web page behaves or responds to user interaction. What tools do you need to write JavaScript? Any plain text editor, whatever you use to write HTML with, you can also use to write JavaScript with. For example, I will be using the Komodo Edit editor. Many editors have built in syntax checking for JavaScript, not all of them. You could use a specific IDE, such as Aptana Studio, which is recommended by the book, but I am not using that as it is quite difficult. There are many online tools, and some of them are available in the resources section on Blackboard. And we will also look at the Firebug add-on for Firefox and also for other browsers that makes it easy for us to debug our JavaScript. Three term terms I would like to discuss. The first is graceful de degradation. This is what we did in the late 90s, early 2000s. We would build a website with all the features and then realize that certain browsers didn't support them, so we would have to write backward compatible code. What we are doing in today's world is what's called progressive enhancement, which means we're building the site first with the basic features so that they are usable for everyone, then we are adding the bells and whistles so that if the browser supports the bells and whistles, it will support them. If not, it still will have a fully functioning site. Unobtrusive JavaScript is the separation of JavaScript from the content, just like we separate CSS from the content. This is what we will be using in this class. JavaScript is object-oriented, meaning the things that we work with on the page we can refer to as objects. And some of the objects that we work with are not on the page. They are built into the language, such as the date object. Objects have properties, characteristics, methods, things the object can do, and events, things that can happen to that object. The browser object model is the traditional object model from the early days of JavaScript. It consists of many built-in objects, 
such as the window object, which is essentially the browser, and the document object, which is essentially the page, the math object, which allows us to do mathematical calculations, the date object, which allows us to display the date, and do date calculations. We will be learning about these in this class. They still are part of JavaScript. The document object model was introduced in the late 1990s, and it is not part of JavaScript. It is standardized by the W3C, and, it, and what it essentially is, it is a hierarchy of the page elements. The document object model allows us to access any element or any group of elements on the page. The traditional browser object model did not allow us to do that, so the document object model was a great advancement. Although it is difficult to use, which is why frameworks were developed. Let's take a look at how we write JavaScript code. JavaScript code is embedded in the head or the body. Technically, in, in today's world, you are not going to be using JavaScript in the body section because that is not an unobtrusive JavaScript. We want to keep our JavaScript separate from the HTML so it's going to be in the head section or an external file. So let's take a look. We have the opening script tag and the closing script tag. The JavaScript code goes inside. The script tag, and this will go in the head section, the script tag can have a type attribute. It is optional in HTML5. Now, we also can place JavaScript in an external file by using the opening and closing script tag and the source attribute, which indicates the file name. Notice it is .js. JavaScript comments single line, multiple line, and an example from the book of some JavaScript comments. Notice there's a lot of JavaScript code also. In the first couple chapters, the first couple pages of chapter two, the author shows you some very intricate examples of JavaScript code. Don't worry about that if you can't understand it. We will be learning as time goes on. There is also an opening and closing no script tag for code to place messages and other code for browsers that don't support JavaScript. All right, identifiers. An identifier is the name that we will give to a variable, most often, method, properties, functions, and objects. So things that we work with in JavaScript, we may need to call them something. There are two ways in which we, two syntaxes that are very commonly used in the industry. The first and most popular is what is called camel casing syntax. In camel casing syntax, all of the words are capitalized except that the first letter of all of the words are capitalized except the first word. So here again, if we had a variable that was holding the value of your first name, you might want to write it this way. You might want to also write it with the underscore notation. Either way is fine. Please, no spaces in any type of identifiers. Thank you. Okay, so are there rules for naming identifiers? Yes. They can begin, or excuse me, they must begin with either a letter, the dollar character, or the underscore. They cannot begin with a number, but they can contain numbers. They cannot contain spaces, thank you. Punctuation, mathematical or logical operators, which we will be covering. And they cannot be JavaScript reserved words. There are a lot of reserved words in the JavaScript language, such as displayed here, and we will be learning more about them as time goes on. And here you see an example of some JavaScript code using some identifiers. Here again, we will learn about this code as time goes on. Thank you.